If you follow my channel for any length of time, you'll know that Sam Craft is all about giving you, the fellow side hustler, small business entrepreneur, or hobbyist, more information, tools, tricks, techniques, and things to help your life easier in your workshop. Hey everybody, my name is Sam and welcome back to Sam Craft. Today's video is going to be another X-Tool F1 video featuring the slide extension add-on for the machine. And I'm going to be making this, a coaster template. An easily removable template or jig to allow you to set up three coasters all at once, set the machine to engrave them, and otherwise focus on other things for your small business. As we jump into this project, I want to let you guys know that I do sell this file down below. So if you're looking for something that is a click, drag and drop, rock and roll, get yourself going with the machine and the slide extension, there's a link to it down below. Otherwise, if you want to see how I designed this, use it, get some creativity flowing, and make your own, this video is also going to be just as helpful. As we get started on this project, I want to make a point and make something that's pretty clear. While you're going to see me use exact dimension 8th inch Baltic Works plywood, you don't have to use Baltic Works plywood, and you also don't have to use something that is the exact dimensions of the pieces I use. While I'm using my X-Tool P2 to cut out precision rectangles, just know as long as it's large enough for your circles and square design to fit on, to still fit on your table with your clamps and everything still work, that's the goal. You don't have to have a P2 CO2 laser. You don't have to have laser cut pieces. And ultimately, the specific size of this is not what is critical. Again, just make sure it will fit on your table, has enough room for your circles and squares, and also allows room for your clamps. As you begin to put the wood onto your slide extension table, you want to make sure that you have gone through all the setup procedures for your aligning and setting up your slide extension and that your left ruler, your little fence there, is clamped down super tight. That's going to be one of the points of reference for this material to be clamped down and for this whole template to actually work. The slide extension comes with a handful of clamps and I'm going to be using these, the ones with the taller silver thumb screw, as my stops for the top of the board on the table and then I'm going to be using these the little spring clamps as a clamp on the right side of my piece that will allow me to reference it right up next to my home point or my origin zero zero point allow it to be pushed up against fences on the left side and the front or the top and then also these little guys slide over it clamp it in place and hold it tight Guys, I got you set up here with a screen recording on my desktop computer here, and obviously I'm talking to you guys here on the camera as well. I want to go through two different files that are included with this, the two different files that really make this thing happen. First is the creation file, as I call it. It's the file you will use to create your template. And the second is the template file. It's a file you use to run and actually make stuff with. So first up, jumping into Xtool Creative Space. I'm connected to my Xtool F1 machine. I have the laser extension option clicked over here at the right. That has given myself the appropriate size work bed and I've opened my file. What you're going to see here are a couple of different layers. The purple layer are notes from me. The red is scoring and the orange is engraving. The Samcraft logo is black in this picture because it is a picture, not a vector, but it is set to the engraving settings. First up, let's read through those notes. As always, you want to read through the notes. This is a template you always want to check the position of before you begin. The physical template should be at zero, zero, basically your home point, all the way to the left and all the way back on the actual laser extension bed itself. Likewise, this file in Xful Creative Space is designed and should be at the same position, zero, zero. An easy way to check that is this purple box. This purple box is supposed to illustrate the actual wood piece on your machine. It may or may not match your dimensions. Remember, it doesn't matter. The important part right up here is to align this corner with the machine's home point. So this purple one is what we want to go by, zero, zero. So looking at things here, you can see that I have three circles and three squares. That is all that would fit on this template with the X Tools extension bed. It doesn't fit four. I really wished it did, but honestly, it's okay. Three is much better than one. And if you think in quantities of six, if you do coasters that are six packs or whatever, it can get you there. 
Either way, this is still as much as it will fit and is a lot more useful to allow us to set it once, let it run through, and we can do something else. As far as settings, these are all set with my machine, the x -Tool F1, and with Baltic Birch plywood or wood. They should work for you since we're not cutting through anything. They should work just fine, but if you need to tweak them, definitely do so. Or if you have run your own engraving tests, go ahead and plug those values in. If I click on the engraving layer here, I can see that it's both vectors and bitmaps. Let's go ahead and jump on that bitmap first, which is the Samcraft logo. I click on it, and I've got a preset called Baltic Birch Engrave. It basically is a dot duration of 750, power of 100%, one pass, 200 DPI, and uses the Jarvis bitmap processing. Going back to the engraving layer and selecting the vectors, we can then see that they're all done with the blue light. This whole job is done with the blue light laser. Power of 60, speed of 100 millimeters per second, and 100 lines per centimeter. Moving on to the scoring layer, it runs blue light laser, 75% power, 50 millimeters per second. That is good for me with my material. And then down here on the notes, everything in purple is set to ignore out here at the top. So we're not going to put it out on our file. It's not going to be engraved. It's only there for notes. At this point, we are ready to go ahead and load up our material onto our laser bed. The piece of wood we have cut or we have gotten to fit, we want to go ahead and sit it up there, clamp it into place. Then we'll hop back over here, click on start, hop back over there, click the button, and actually make the template. Hot diggity dog, two minutes and 19 seconds later, our template is done. We are now ready to plop some coasters on there and start doing stuff. Very, very cool. I wanna to prove to you guys that this template does work. I'm gonna pull it off the rack here, with those right clamps out of the way, pick it up. Here we have it, ta ta da da. But of course, with everything still in there, as far as our left fence and top fence, plop it back in place, lock it over, and we're good to go. Actually, you know what I want to do to prove to myself and you, I'm going to take this and I want to rerun the scoring layers, the squares and the circle. Let's see if I take it out, move it around, put it back in, does it exactly line up like we hope, like we expect, or like I'm saying it does. Let's find out.
Ah ha ha! That is awesome! It actually did work. Now it's a tiny, tiny bit out on that very first one, but honestly, that's within a margin of error that I'm very happy with. I will be able to line my clusters up visually with these templates anyway, and I know it's going to be fine. I don't do any of my cluster designs to where it is like dead set on the edges, on the circle, it's not that exact because when you're dealing with things such as coasters especially slate which is the most common style that i do sell you're not going to have the exact same ones all the time so i've learned the hard way maybe but i've learned not to take your designs to the edge give yourself some wiggle room so you can have a little bit of variances and everything still look good in the end so now let's jump over to xtool creative space load up our template file drop in some designs let you guys see how that works then we'll run this thing and we'll do a batch of three coasters not sure of the design just yet, but I'll come up with something. We're done with the creation file, so let's go ahead and open up our template file. I always say no to saving the project. I don't want to overwrite my template. We'll go ahead and open template file. Let that load into Excel Creative Space. What you're going to notice is everything is purple. There is only one layer. That layer is named as notes because nothing is set to output. If I click on start down here at the bottom, it's going to tell me up here, no design elements are available on the canvas. Good. This is how I know I'm on the template. One thing you're also going to want to be mindful of with this is, let's say you get in and something is really out of whack, like this. It is way out there. Just select it here, go up to your position, and set X to 0, Y to 0. That puts it right back where it needs to be. If anything goes awry, if you accidentally click and drag and you've messed it up and you're like, oh my gosh, just do X position zero, Y position zero, and you're good to go. You're back where it needs to be. So about 15 minutes has elapsed. I've pulled in three of my designs. I got them set up. I have them colorized here with my layers. If you don't know what this is about or how I'm about to achieve the results I am, there's a link to a video down below where I show you guys how to colorize slate using a diode laser. Very interesting stuff. Some really great looking results. And you definitely want to check it out below if you have not seen that video yet. I have three of my coaster designs ready to go, loaded in my template, aligned, centered, and ready to start the job. All right, at this point, I'm ready to run my file. I've got my blank coasters here. What I need to do next is measure their thickness because I need to punch this into the laser itself. Let's see, that's at 6.3 millimeters. That's at five and a half and five and a half. So we'll choose 5.75 millimeters. We're also going to add in the thickness of our board, which is three millimeters. So I'm gonna tell it that the material height is 8.75 millimeter. All right, this little prompt here is telling me this laser head is about to move on its own. So make sure the shield is up, make sure there are no obstructions here, and that there is nothing higher than 10 centimeters on the base plate. We don't have to worry about that, that's really tall. So what this is going to do is the X tool is going to bring the laser head all the way down, bottom it out so it knows where it is. Then it's going to move up the height of the material to focus it. So that's what this little screen is. It's pretty cool how they have this set up. So I'll go ahead and click OK here and the laser is going to start to move. If you notice here, it's a little bit off, but if we get one of our materials, take it over, perfectly good. Now I need to go ahead and position my slate tiles right where I want them, making sure they are centered as best as I can get them on my little square outlines. I've went ahead and clicked start in Xcool Creative Space because it takes a little while to process the number of layers that I use. So it's ready to go. I put these down, click start, push the button on the side, and we'll start to rock and roll.
Ah ha ha. I feel like I'm holding some kind of a charcuterie board or something. Nope. Just a board with Bigfoot coasters on it. <laughs> Very cool. This is awesome. This is exactly what I would want from a template. Something that works, something that is convenient, but easily removable, so I don't basically lose functionality of my machine otherwise. And I believe I've got it. So you guys can also see these slate coasters have been colorized of sorts. Remember, there's a video down below on a link where I go through the process on how exactly this is done, how you achieve these results, and how to find them, as well as a free file. So definitely check that out down there. It's pretty rare that I actually prototype and make something in one day, which today, honestly, I have, and I don't have things to tweak with it. But honestly, I don't have anything to tweak with this. This is exactly as many coasters as I can fit with the Xtool extensions work surface it works it's square it's circle and you know what that's good enough as a reminder if you want to pick this file up to make your own there's a link to it down below doing so yes costs a little bit of money but it honestly helps support me and my family as I spend a lot of time doing this research and development producing things and making content for you guys it's one small way that you can choose it's always a choice to pay me back and help keep things rocking and rolling and keep Sam craft around for a long time Regardless, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them for me down below. Otherwise, take care, and I'll see you guys next time in the workshop. It's a good way to lose an eyeball. <laughs>